Yeah, um, I love my team and they're competing hard. We're not playing clean enough to win currently. Um, too, many, too many mistakes, not only uh, in terms of execution, but in penalties. I see growth, I see progress, I see potential, and we'll keep grinding at the process so we play cleaner, better, longer. Um, great idea now of uh, seeing a Mountain West opponent. I thought uh, Fresno State was a very good team on film as I studied them. And yeah, it wasn't a matter of will or heart or competitive spirit. We did not play clean enough um, to win the football game, as you saw. Glad to take questions. You've mentioned in the past that uh, when things, you know, aren't are going kind of right for the most part, you're not really talking on the sidelines. You're not talking into the headphones. When things are going poorly, you're talking a whole lot more. How much were you talking tonight? Quite a bit. Um, just with things that can be cleaned up, um, mostly pre-snap or post-snap. Um, and those kind of penalties are, all right, those are just disciplined things. And as this team learns and is in competitive contests week in and week out with a chance to win week in and week out and the pressure increases, uh, our execution has to hold more consistently. Our, um, uh, our schemes have to be um, deliberate in terms of how they're presented and how they're, how they're run. And it can't be, regard, it can't be contextually specific. Um, so great chance to return an onside kick, uh, all different kinds of situations. Those things have to be executed really well um, to win football games and to, to do well in our league or to do well in any league. And we have a lot of work to do. Uh, 17 penalties, penalties tonight. Scott uh, ties the school record. You had 16 last week against Auburn. When's the last time you've had that many penalties kind of in that short a span? I'm not, sure I've ever, I'm not sure I ever had in my career. I, I don't know. Someone will go back and find maybe something, but I don't remember that ever happening. And yeah, I want my team to play aggressive. I want them to play hard. I want them to play rel relentless. I want them to play through the whistle. I want them to, um, to play great football. Um, they're currently not deciphering between the execution cl cleanness and the mindset. And that has to be, um, there has to be a distinction between those two at a higher level. Um, as we continue to push to, to move the team forward. This week you said that, uh, you know, the 0-3 the start was kind of mildly charted waters. Uh, I don't think you've ever had an 0-4 start before. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, do you just have to, any reaction to that? I don't. No, it, it, it feels the same. I, I know exactly what the team needs. I know the direction we're going. I see progress. I also see improvement, but I also see areas we have to improve. And I know the time frame. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uncharted, but... Yeah, charted as well. Coach, you, you not to harp on the penalties, but it was a major factor in the game tonight. But when you have a, a long touchdown pass wiped out, how demoralizing is that? Because that touchdown, it would have changed the, the, the tenor of the game. Sure. I would say frustrating um, for sure. And especially if, um, if there's a trend or if there's a pattern, which the last two weeks shows there is. Have you ever had a play wiped out by the lights in the stadium too? That was first. It's a first. Uh, Coach, so obviously there's no, you know, moral victories in a loss. You know, it's either you win or you lose. But um, from your perspective, is there any positives that you see? Oh, yeah. There's, there's positives all over. We can move the football. We're explosive. We're dynamic. Our defense is improving every single week. And they responded multiple times today. Um, and I hope that didn't go unnoticed. So there's growth happening everywhere, but there's not consistency. Um, and we're not playing clean enough or good enough or well, en well enough yet um, to have the results we want. And so mentioning the record to 0 and 4, does that like get you at all? Or do you view each week as we're, all, we're coming in 0 and 0? The record yeah, doesn't matter. Certainly you acknowledge it because it's part of my job. And we do keep score. I'm on right now to New Mexico State. What was your read on the uh, the offsides on the uh, kicking thing at the end? With, yeah, uh, I, thought, I thought we were onside. I really did. And they finally told me to quit talking about it. But I thought we were onside. And then um, Gabriel Lopez was ejected tonight uh, for kind of throwing a punch at the end of the play and all that. Um, I mean, how do you kind of address that going forward? It's similar to the penalties that are before or after the whistle. And I want my team competitive, and I want them tough, and I want them competitive, but I want them within the rules.
and that comes with discipline and it also comes with coaching and so the team is playing reflective of how I'm leading them right that's what my job is and so I have to make sure I'm clearer with my staff then they have to make sure they coach their players at a higher level um, so those things are addressed and out of the way so we can move the program forward but I'm responsible and then Jaden was uh, you know called for targeting again second time this year ejected if he gets another one obviously one game suspension how do you kind of also address that going forward same felt need and and sometimes um, yeah the felt need has to go deep and sometimes it has to cost the game before a lesson is learned do I hope that happens no um, sometimes words aren't enough and We'll see. And then uh, Bobby was inactive tonight, I believe, in the secondary, as was uh, Dom Tatum, too, uh, kind of a thinner group in the secondary as well. Noah looked like he had like a club on his right hand or something like that. What is kind of the overall health of that group, and how do you think they held up tonight? Yeah, we're thin, we're injured, but I think they held up pretty dang well. And again, um, you might not see it, but I saw significant improvement defensively, and they've been working so hard, and they are chipping away at it, and I'm encouraged by that. And then in terms of, uh, you know, the overall game plan for attacking a guy like Keen and this offense in particular for all the shifts and what they kind of bring to the table, I mean, how did you feel that the group kind of executed? Yeah, they're, they're really explosive and known for downfield throws and downfield shots and downfield connections. And I think we defended that part really well and probably the most consistent run defense we've had yet um, throughout, probably the most consistent defensive performance we've had yet um, with a really dynamic, explosive that team had scored 48 and 46 back to back. And yeah, so I, I think they handled it pretty well. In terms of uh, Devin, uh, two interceptions for the third straight game. Just what a, what's kind of the read on that situation going forward in terms of him turning the ball over? Yeah, he wants to win and he's very confident. And it's just a fine line between shaping and molding his decisions while he's aggressive and confident. And that's part of growth, part of leading a team, part of the number of snaps he's getting. And that's not an excuse or excusing him. Yeah, but I'm not toning him back. We'll just keep talking about the decisions and have him lead our team. Uh, so, Coach, down 15 uh, deep with uh, nine plus to go. Uh, it was fourth and one. Was it because it was such a short distance? And uh, your decision to go on that? Yeah, I was waiting for that question. Yeah, I thought we could get a yard, and I thought we could get a yard anywhere, and wanted my team to know I thought we could get a yard anywhere, and yeah, we didn't. So that looks bad on the head coach. Um, so I own that decision, and in retrospect, anytime something doesn't work like that, how can you say it was the right decision? <laughs>